We talk about fear a lot on this show, and that fear stems from us being unfamiliar with things. For example, some people are actually afraid of this little dog, believe it or not, because they aren't familiar with her. Now, obviously I'm not afraid of this dog, but let's look at a dog that you might be afraid of. So by contrast, here we have a Great Dane. I've never seen this Great Dane before in my life, but I'm familiar with Great Danes, so I wasn't scared. You, not being familiar with Great Danes, might not feel the same. But once you're around them, you find out that they're pretty amazing dogs. Just like sharks. You're probably scared of sharks if you aren't familiar with them, but you don't have to be. Look at the teeth on this guy. That's right up there with some big sharks. But he's not gonna bite me, are you? Because I know Great Danes are awesome. And I approached them in a smart manner. You gotta do the same thing with all animals, including sharks. So what else about dogs and sharks? Well, they both come in a wide range of sizes, shapes, colors. They even act differently from each other. Even within the same species, one shark will act different than the next shark. And I'm sure we've all experienced that with dogs. But would you say that your dog has a personality? I'm sure a few of you just said, uh, yeah, my dog has the best personality in the world. But is that personality or is it just behavior that we're attributing to personality? And what about sharks? Can sharks have personalities? Are they smart? Well, let's talk to some people who work with sharks and see what they have to say. Tell me about the personalities of the white shark, because the concept of a shark having a personality is very foreign to quite a few people. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting that people think that sharks can't have personalities. It's like, you know, that, that kind of says that everybody sitting in a room of 100 people says and does exactly the same thing, and that's certainly not the case. You know, just like people, sharks, and for that matter, all animals, every single animal out there on this planet has got a personality. Some are stronger than others. But white sharks undoubtedly have got strong personalities. Some are shy and retiring, others are bold and assertive. Where we look at maybe comparing a shark to a dog is if you get into somebody's backyard and you walk through their backyard, a dog will come up to investigate you and bark at you and smell you and circle around you. But generally speaking, it's not going to do you much harm. And the same thing with sharks. If we dive into their backyard, um, the opportunity is there for a shark to come up to investigate you. Um, whether it will bite you or not, that that's, depends on how you behave as well. really are no different to a dog in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. You know, you get you get the cranky dog, and you get the, uh, the dog that really is not, in, just generally not interested. And that's that's how we've found sh white sharks here in Australia that we've worked with, particularly um, some of the juveniles up the east coast of Australia. They can be like cranky little school kids, some of them, but the majority of them, they are not interested. Right. They're not interested in human interaction. Yeah, after um, a few years of seeing the same shark, uh, I often find that they become my favourite for a little while. I guess if I was to look back over the years, um, Moo is, is my favourite. He's been around the longest, he's got spots, he's got character. Uh, a big, beautiful shark called Tinker was a, a powerful female for, for about five years and she was gorgeous. Um, and Johnny was an old long favorite of mine as well. He's, he's gone now for a few years, but I still haven't forgotten Johnny. Do sharks have personalities? Uh, I, I definitely think so, yeah. I think, you know, there are bolder sharks, there's shyer sharks. Um, and you're not talking about a species, you're talking about- There's in differences within species, mm. yeah. Between species and within species, for sure. And especially if you've spent time with, with sharks that are in like ecotourism that are baited and you can see the same individuals over time, um, you can definitely see that some individuals are uh, exhibit a type of uh, repeated behavior that seems to be very typical of that individual and other ones that, that exhibit a different behavior but repetitively of the same type of typical behavior. Some are shy, mm -hmm. some are bold. Mm -hmm. 
some are full of scars, some aren't. Some take a while to work something out. Like I had a shock one day. And every time he charged a bait. He come around, he sees a bait and he charges it. I pull it away. And he got the message on to an hour. And then after that, I lost all my bait in, in five hours. God. He charged a bait. And then as I pull the bait, he turned on it. Mm. And charged even straight at the boat. Doesn't matter what I did. If I pulled the bait from there, up the water in the air, you'd get it every time. So he adapted. He adapted. Um, breaches are, are happen so quickly. So, I mean, you can only really um, uh, analyze them after, after the fact, after you actually see the footage, after you see the images and so forth, and actually see if it's whether the same, if not the same shark. Um, I believe sharks can, can learn. It's been proven that sharks have an ability to learn and therefore replicate as well. What shows me the interest part of that is actually that these sharks have a cognitive behavior of, a, of learning and a, also be assimilating the same conditions or the same lighting conditions and the same prey methodology. And that was very interesting to me that these sharks ex exhibited the same amount or the same breaching behavior. Both times were successful, that uh, the shark replicated it over and over again, obviously learning from success. Now, when we first started diving, an opening mouth, we had a shark around called Cope because it was full of copper pot. And he'd come in, follow the bait, and I'd get him right up and I'll open the mouth all the time. Every time I go in it. And he stayed here for a few months. We could do that every day. That's on him, we learned how to do it properly. Because it was big, easier with bigger sharks and smaller sharks. Why? Small shark, I can show you video footage. Open a small shark, like a meter and a half. And I got him by his nose and his mouth. He's <laughs> hyper. Yeah, oh, it's hyper. It's too quick. Big shark is good. From the tip of the nose to the teeth. Like that. Big snout. Big snout. Everything is slower. So they're easier to work with. And it looks more impressive. And that, that particular day, that was, a, that was the perfect shark. It, it, it was doing absolutely everything. It was the best shark you, you, you could dream of. Um, during the course of the day, us and another boat both saw that shark, and both boats had that shark for over an hour at least. And when we pulled up anchor and left, the shark was still around. And it was just slowly cruising around. Its head was, when it was up around the boat, its, its head was actually more out of the water than in. Um, it was, it was lovely and it was, it was doing everything so slowly so it wasn't, you weren't worried about the shark hurting itself because it was coming in so slowly for the bait, it was coming very, very slowly up to the cage and just nudging it with its, with its snout and mouthing it, but very softly, everything was very soft. And every time we pushed it away from the boat, it did the postural aerial gaping, it, it did everything. And it was a, a really, really good shark. Again, that shark was between three and three and a half meters. Did you, could you see the shark searching for you? like? as it's going around slowly you get it on, did you get the sense that it was looking and checking out and uh, almost expecting you to push them off again? You do get that impression, whether, whether it's true or not, but you do get that impression because particularly when you're working off the dive platform and the dive platform is between the motors, there's no bait there. And if the shark bypasses the bait, doesn't even look at the bait, ignores the cage, comes up to exactly where you did the last nose up, it doesn't come in to mouth the dive platform or the propellers, and it's coming and it's got its snout out and it's almost looking at you, you can see that I'm looking at you, then it's almost like it's, it's coming back to you, that's the impression you get. Whether it is or not, I don't know, but that's just the impression you get. We had a, a shark named Rasta uh -huh. in South Africa that we saw over years, and one of the things that she did is she always liked to lift her head out of the water and you know kind of swim around the boat with her head out of the water. And you could, it was very easy to identify just based on her behavior. You know, lifting her head out of the water, almost like spy hopping, and then swimming around the boat with her head partially out of the water. Does that mean rolling on her side with an eye, or does that mean her whole head is up? I've seen her whole head up. And she's just checking you out? Yeah, definitely. Like, you feel like you've made eye contact? Uh, definitely, definitely, yeah. Uh, we've got one shark in particular we call Shy Guy. We've seen at Seal Island every season for the last 11 years and he has only on one occasion ever come to our boat and we've seen him hunting and killing seals on more than 40 different occasions. 
So he's there all the time, but pays no attention to the vessel, he's completely disinterested by what we do. And then we've got other sharks, a shark called Kaz, another one called Rasta, and years gone by, who are super curious, very relaxed around the boat, put their heads out, have a look at what's going on, swim very gently around the boat. And, you know, those are just two contrasting examples of the completely different personalities of these animals. We've got. Yeah, we've known Big Jumbo for six or seven years now. Um, she's been a formidable shark um, and uh, certainly a shark you don't want to be caught at unawares with. She approaches head on and she um, she seems to be more dangerous because she changes her speed and looks at you and you can see some sort of intelligence in, in her head. It's not just a shark circling around with a big lifeless black eye. She, she looks curious right at you. And you can clearly see some that are very relaxed, very confident, and others that are shy and, you know, um, trying to uh, avoid anything that they feel can possibly be threatful towards them. So whilst they don't talk to us with their mouths, they talk to us with their posturing and body language and certainly show that they, they are very different to each other. How sad would you be if you found out that the uh, Western Australian government called Johnny? Yeah, well, this is the thing. I seem to get attached to these sharks. I seem to, I get them a personality that may be my perception of them, that they're all different animals. And if uh, a shark that I knew it got killed, it would be like losing a member of my family nearly. You know, they're, they're like a really uh, a fond pet. And um, even though I don't know if they know me, I get to know them by looking at them day after day, year after year. So what do you think? Were you able to decide whether or not sharks have personalities? Are dogs and sharks the same? No, of course not. But I think we drew a few parallels. If you want to hear a few more stories about sharks that are acting like dogs, so to speak, you can click on the link in the description of this video and watch some bonus footage. Now to be clear, I love dogs and I love sharks, but I'm not telling you that sharks aren't dangerous. They are. But dogs can be dangerous too. In fact, a lot of things can be dangerous. That doesn't mean we have to automatically fear them, but we do need to be smart about them, just the way you would be smart around a big dog. Thanks for watching.